get started in just a few minutes. We're having some technical difficulties trying to get Greg on here. So give me one second. Do you know where the other outlet plug thing is? Okay, hi everybody. Um, it's me. I'm sitting on the floor <laughs> in my new house, uh, which is better than outside. Um, my kids are still up, but um, so you may hear them in the background. I apologize. Um, and my internet is spotty at best because I moved even further out into the wilderness. So this ought to be great. Um, still working on getting Greg attached to us as well. Um, so we are going to get started just because I, would, I don't want to um, mismanage time. And as soon as he is able to pop on, I will um, include him. And uh, we're going to kind of tag team this a little bit. So um, here we go. Give me one second again to just share this. All right. So just a little bit of a book overview. They did change some things around this year um, a little bit. Most of the rules uh, overview is the same, like the way that it's set up in sections um, or the different rules. Um, but then the sections, they've kind of switched around. Um, and then they also tried to streamline the articles underneath too so it wasn't it wasn't more than one place excuse me where you could find things so for those of us that are used to um 
you know, citing a certain rule for a certain thing. Uh, I'm so sorry. Give me one more second. Um, we may have to get used to different rules. That's what I was kind of trying to say. Okay, so if you're looking at your book, if you have it in front of you, uh, great. Uh, I have the electronic version, so I can't give you page numbers, uh, but all the rules and the numbers and stuff are the same. So rule one is all the definitions. And this is definitions for cheer as well as dance. Um, so some of these definitions we don't use. Some of them have like a cheer version and a dance version. Um, rules two is general risk management. And again, that's for cheer and dance. And then rule three is the one that we cite the most often and that is the cheer rules. So anything pertaining to cheer specific just to cheer is in rule three. And then rule four, you can paper clip off. I usually put a little binder clip at the top and never look at, the, at those because those are just the dance rules. Um, over here we have, oh, hi, I think we got Greg. Hi, Greg. Oh, hi. Finally. Oh, there you are. Hi. Yay. <laughs> okay, so jump in whenever you want to. All right, so okay. then after the rules, we have um, all of the, the or in, the, in rule three, then you have this, the uh, sections. So section one is apparel and accessories. Section two, stunting personnel. Three is inversions, et cetera. I'm not going to read these all to you. Um, but this is important when we are citing rules for coaches. You have to cite the rule number, which is this, this number over here. You have to cite the section number, which is this number over here. And then underneath all of these sections are articles. And those are the very specific rules. And sometimes that can go to another number, another letter, another number. And there could be a clarification or an exception. Um, and so when we're citing things, um, we want to use the... Um, the numbers as much as possible. So that first number there, three, lets me know that we're under cheer rules. The second number, three, lets me know that we're in inversions over here. Article five, which we'll get to later, and then B and one underneath article five. And that's the way that we can cite it for coaches. So they know what we're talking about and we know what we're talking about. You also need to write down um, what the not necessary you don't have to repeat the entire rule because it's written there for them but explain in their routine what you're talking about so the place where the infraction happened first stunt sequence second stunt sequence dismount um beginning of the routine whatever um and then also a specific skill it was the suspended forward roll wrong grip in the pyramid whatever the case is we can paraphrase all right greg you want to take over yeah okay, i'm back sorry go, go ahead so when we get into our general risk management, not a whole lot has changed here. Um, fingernails, you only take it if it's obvious. Um, please be um, very uh, light on this unless it is so obvious that somebody's going to get hurt. Just warn it. Um, if, if, they're, um, if they look a little bit fishy, just tell them to be careful. Um, hair, same thing. Barrettes, bobby pins, soft metal clips are okay. Hair consistently in the face, on shoulders where it gets in the way. Warning, heartbeats are not okay. But again, take a warning. Props, um, we're not going to warn for props. We are going to take for props and props because um, they've made some changes to that. Um, the flyers may not release hard materials, sharp edge props directly to the ground, and a person on the ground must gently toss or place the prop. Um, they cannot step, land on a prop during stunting, tumbling, or jumps. Cast, this is a new rule. They added this. Um, if, they are, if they're in a cast, uh, a plaster cast or a walking booth, they cannot participate in partner stunts, pyramids, tosses, jumps, or tumbling. This includes being the required spotter. When I explained this to the coaches, I said, basically, they're going to be sitting on the sideline, holding the sign, saying, go, team, go. Um, <laughs> they could dance. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> That's it. That's it. And then um, <laughs> blood. Make sure that if, if you see blood, you stop the routine. And everything has to be cleaned up before um, you can continue on. 
Something that we've done in the past is just have them, if they can't get it off their uniform in that little bit of time, if it's just like a nosebleed or something and they're able to come back in and start um, and redo the routine with the with their team, um, they can just throw a t-shirt over top or even change into a warm-up suit or something. It doesn't have to be the exact same uniform if they're able to still compete. Um, but we can't yeah. have bodily fluids, fresh bodily fluids anywhere. All right, any questions about that? That. And Greg, on like a three to five second delay. Um, so I'm just going okay. to give it a couple minutes to check to see if there are any questions and then we'll move on. Sorry, I'm looking at my phone trying to, <laughs> trying to look at the comments at the same time. I don't see any questions. Hi, Shannon. Glad you could make it. Soft Hi, Shannon. Hi, Angie. Hi, Aaron. Yeah, Angie. Soft metal clips, the kind that go around the braids or around dreadlocks, they're soft. Like I've felt them before. So they're no different than like those clip barrettes that clip into hair that way. The soft metal clips are are fine because they're not, they're not hard and they're not really sharp either. Um, beads though can cause cause injury so that these are not okay. And it specifically says that in the situational rulings in the back. All right. Moving on. Jewelry, not allowed. Everybody knows this. So um, if they have jewelry, it's a deduction. Um, that, that, that includes covering them up with band-aids. Hey, Karen, look, I'm drinking too. Don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, so mascots <laughs> in full head body costumes cannot stunt or tumble. And then glitter must readily adhere to hair, face, body, uniforms and can only be on signs if they're laminated. Um, we talked about all that again within our coaches um, meetings and glitter should not really, the glitter is different than shimmer. They're allowed shimmer, but not, can't blow glitter on their hair or onto their body. Yeah, we don't see a ton of glitter anymore. Um, and mascots are every now and then, but you know, just in yeah. case, sometimes, uh, sometimes they are on there. They can hold a sign or like, you know, do a do a um, yeah. a pull with a flag in the back or something, but that's about it. All right. Woo, next is stunting personnel. So again, you know, a lot of these haven't changed. So when when you get into you know that our bases can assume a back bend, hand, um, headstand or handstand, they can't. Um, they hold um, bases hold objects in their hands that is supporting a top person. Um, bracers can't. Uh, must not provide primary support. Um, the spotter must not provide primary support. The spotter, we added B, which was remain um, visually focused on the head, neck, and shoulders. And then the spotter positions, not grasp under, um, not grasp sole of the flyer's foot, not grasp hand of the base under the flyer's foot, not place torso under stunt, not hold objects, and not stand with hands behind their back. We're, we really want to make sure that our spotters are in place and they have their um, their eyes and their attention on those who are in the air for safety reasons. Terry, anything else? Absolutely. I was just going to say, if if a spotter is providing primary support, and we're not talking about like during the cradle when they have to catch, but in the air, then they cannot be the required spotter. So they really need to be um, support like. Uh, secondary, you know, support or so they need to be able to let go of the stunt and catch uh, if there's an issue. So uh, just kind of keep that in mind. All right, I'm going to give it one more second to see if there's any questions. These are all pretty self-explanatory, though. I don't think, I mean, I just kind of, yeah. we just kind of put the numbers here just for quick reference, but um, Rarely do we have to call these. The only time really is, you know, sometimes with the spotter position. Sorry, that keeps popping up. I wish there was a way I could take that off. Um, there probably is. I just don't know how. Um, <laughs> there's uh, spotter positions sometimes, but it's really, I mean, most of our coaches and most of the industry have had these spotter rules for like a long, long time. So it's not quite as much of an issue anymore. Yay, which is good. All right, moving on. Okay, so before we get into the uh, inversion rules, which is rule three, or I'm sorry, yes, rule three, 
section three is inversions. I just want to remind everybody the difference between these three types of inversions. Um, and these are pyramid inversions specifically. So a braced flip indicates that it's a pyramid which a braced top person performs a hip overhead rotation. So they're doing a, a flip, like a front flip or a back flip, while being released from all persons on the performing surface. So yes, they are braced, which means they are connected to another flyer, a flyer connected to a flyer, um, but they are completely released from the people on the floor. A braced inversion, if you're just saying inversion, it's just a pyramid in which a braced top person is in an inverted position. So this could be something like one flyer is holding another flyer's arm while she's in like a handstand on her bases. Okay, and then they do a, a transition after that. So it doesn't have to involve a flip or head over, um, hip over head rotation at all. It could just be anytime they're inverted and they're touching another flyer. So it's, again, it's flyer to flyer. That's what a bracer is. Um, but they're just in an, in, in an inverted <laughs> position. Um, and then a braced roll is kind of like those, uh, like level three brace braced flips, like the legal level three brace flips if you're coming to us from All-Star. So it's a pyramid which the top person performs hip overhead rotation while remaining in contact with the person on the performing surface. So this is a non-release transition, okay? And that's different from a braced flip. So if you look back at braced flip, you'll see it says um, while being released, a braced roll is non-release. They're remaining in contact with someone on the performing surface while they're doing that quote unquote flip. Um, so it's kind of like when they lay on their back and the base grabs their foot and pulls them around while they're connected to another flyer. And we'll have some examples of this, video examples of this later, but um, sometimes coaches and get confused with these three types of pyramid inversions. So just wanted to clear that up before we got into the specific rules. All right, so keep your questions coming. We can always go back. We're just gonna kind of roll through to keep time um, appropriate. Greg, you wanna add anything to this? No, keep going. Good. Moving on. <laughs> go ahead. Okay, so in inversions, um, I'm also, I've got my book right here, so I'm kind of referring back and forth because you should be using your book Good. as well. Um, so the right, so after in three three, um, three three one, um, that did not change. Uh, so three three two did not change. Three 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 um, did not. Um, it did change. It added one extra, and that is when the um, catchers are not the original bases. The new catchers are in place when the transition is initiated and remain close to the original bases and are not part of any other skill. So just be aware that um, when that when the, 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 the bases, um, let me excuse me, when, when the catchers are not the original bases, that they have to be ready at the initiation. And we all know that the initiation is at the dip. So if you look right here, brace inversions that do not flip or roll must have two people under the flyer. If released, everything before and after are illegal. Each bracer is in a prep level or below. Prep or shoulder level need two people under. Bracers do not provide primary support. Flyer makes no more than a quarter turn around the bracer. If new catchers, they must be in place prior to the initiation of the release, and they cannot be involved in any in, in anything else. And then the flyer cannot land inverted. And then the flyer and at least one bracer maintain hand to hammer or hand to arm contact. Right, so this 333, you're only going to call that if it's just a regular braced inversion. So not the flips, not the rolls, not the hip overhead rotation. So this again is like one flyer connected to someone in a handstand, like a thigh, side, thigh stand, handstand. And then they're, you know, if you're calling B, and they're you know, releasing to a non-inverted position. So they could go from like, the flyer could go from a handstand up to an extension while that bracer is holding their other arm. Um, the thing that, that always catches my eye when I'm judging this is if the prep, the bracer with the prep doesn't have a back spot. And I'm always like, oh, it's a release. They need a back spot. They do not have to have a back spot in a braced inversion. 
Okay, that's different for when we get into a brace flip, but if it starts inverted and it lands uninverted, the bracer does not need a back spot if they're in a prep or a shoulder stand. Okay, so just kind of keep that in mind. Um, and I'm always one of those where like, I'll jot it down, like no back spot, and then I'll go back and check and make sure that this is a situation where they don't need that back spot. But um, really the only time they do is in those braced flips. Um, I might actually, let me see. Can you guys see this? Maybe not. I'm gonna see if I have um, a video for that, Greg. I'm gonna have you move on though while I'm doing that. Okay. <laughs> oh, let me do this real quick. Um, so a bracer versus a post. So the next couple uh, slides, I guess, or the next couple rules deal with that difference between a, a, a roll and a flip, a braced roll and a braced flip. So again, I just wanna kind of remind us that a bracer is a top person connected to another top person. So whenever we're saying a bracer, we mean another flyer connected to a flyer. So it's flyer to flyer contact. If we're talking about a post, okay, a, per, a post is a person on the ground, it's on the mat connected to a top person. So it could be a base, a back spot, a front, an extra person that they just have there. Um, and so when we're talking about a post, we're talking about a person on the mat touching the performance surface connected to the flyer. If they are connected to someone on the ground, whether it be their back spot, their base, their front, the extra person, it doesn't matter. It is a non-release transition. Their other hand, foot, arm, hair, uniform, doesn't matter, can be connected to anybody else, another flyer, another base, whatever. It's still non-release, okay? So, it, you know, those hybrid flips that we were seeing last year and we'll probably see again this year, which are braced rolls where they're connected one hand to a bracer. Can you see my little hand up here? I don't know what you can see in your screen. One hand to a bracer and then one hand to their, their side base and then they do a flip. That is a non-release transition because they're connected to someone on the ground, even though their feet come out of their base's hands. All right, hopefully that's clear. Um, and I think that's gonna help us when we look at the next couple, um, next couple rules. All right, so I'm gonna look up some videos while Greg talks about the next couple chapters. Okay. Or, um, so, as we Sorry. keep as we're talking about inversions, I want to re remind everybody about what the inverted position is um, as defined by NFHS, which is differently than what's defined by USASF. So if you are, <laughs> you know, if you float between the two worlds, they're different. So in, um, by NFHS in our glossary, it says inverted position, shoulders are below the waist. So you can see this if they're in like a pike position, a flat back pike position, and they may lift their waist up. So they kind of look like, like that. That's an inverted position for us because here's their head, here's their waist, and here's their shoulders. So it has to be one foot, it doesn't say anything. It says um, if the shoulders, or below the waist. Okay, so in, um, if we go to three, three, four, brace rolls, flyer has um, two people two people under them, and then the bracer have two people under them. So those are braced rolls for A and B, three, three, four. The post can have contact with any body part of the flyer. It can go forward or it can go backwards. Carrie, do you still, are you still looking for videos? I am. I can. I can move on though. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. So good. Race Are there any questions so far? Um. Let me see. I don't see any yet. Okay. Um, so again, brace rolls, non-release transition. Move, right. Okay, moving up. Oh, this is a doozy. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the brace flips. This is where um, I kind of uh, went ahead. I'm sorry about that. So three, three, five. I got, uh, look, I've got my book. Everybody see my book? I got my book. I don't talk without my book in front of me. Um, so when you talk about 335, so um, both of the flyer's hands and arms are in continuous contact with a bracer. Now it can only be one. Does not have to be two. Last year it had to be two. It had to be connected on both sides. This year it just can be connected on one. I have already seen videos and approved videos so this is already happening. So be aware that they can just be attached to one person, but both hands have to be attached. Um, there must 
uh, be three people involved in the toss catch of the top person, so they need a back five. If the flip ends in a cradle, bracers may release on the, the descent when no longer inverted. So this is this gives you that leeway of the early release, but they cannot be released when they're inverted. So if once they're around, they can release. Um, bracers must be on a multi-base stunt with a spotter. That's a prep with a back spot. And then the um, flyer must be in front or the side of the bracers. And then flyer ends in a non-inverted position. Flyer performs up to one and a quarter flip and a half a twist. And here's the, they added this one again. New catchers must be in place when the flip is initiated. And I put in parentheses. The flip is initiated. It's at the dip. What? So I think we lost you for a second. So you put it in parentheses. At the dip. At the Just dip, make yes. sure that that's how we define the initiation is it's at that dip. Um, We're all going to say a silent prayer for all the, all the back spots that are getting kicked in the face while they attempt this for the first couple times. God yeah. bless and good luck. So I, children. Yeah, so I just, I just went through this with the team as they were trying to explain it to me. Um, but uh, they were explaining it incorrectly and they were doing it very well. So we will see it. It is going to happen. I've already, I've already approved it. And now the, our pyramids <laughs> only need eight people. They do not need 12, they need eight. If they have seven people, then something's wrong. They can't be done. <laughs> yes. All right. Any questions about that? I don't see any questions just yet. Um, I did have a question from a coach, and Greg, maybe you can chime in, or we'll have to see this live. I haven't seen a video of it. Um, but they asked if they're doing a one bracer braced flip, and they do a half twist, but the flyer must be to the front or side of the, is that before they land or after they land? So my, because because okay. if they're doing a half twist, then obviously they're going to be facing the wrong way at some point, but I feel like it's it's intended to be at the beginning of the, um, I'm sorry, at the beginning of the skill that they have so, to be like, they can't be facing each other. Yeah, this is Carrie, this is the one that um, I was just talking about. I spoke oh, to sorry. that coach. <laughs> I spoke to that coach and I read them what was sent to us and it was not correct. So I had them send me a video and I actually sent the video to Jim Lord and he did okay. say it's legal. Okay. Um, okay. What they were saying was not correct. We needed okay. to see a video. And yeah. once I saw the video, that it was correct. Like okay. Good. Yeah. Yeah. It was not making sense. So right. I fixed, but yeah, it, it it's legal. Awesome. Yeah. Jim yeah. Lord is kind of like the end all be all. He makes the rules. So we'll go with his. Okay. Yeah. All right, moving on, three, three, six. Okay, so um, may release to the following, provided there's, um, there's a spotter, a non-inverted with no more than a half twist, um, a loading position with no more than a half turn, or stunt at any level with no twists. So this is their, um, if they start in an inversion, they can do like that little half, that three quarter turn up, and they can come up into a car. Mm -hmm. Anything that you want to say? Um, now? I do have, I do have videos of this. So give me one okay. second to switch my screen here, and then um, it's going to put our faces real big, just to warn you. <laughs> ah! Here we. Go. Oh, we can see the reflection in your glasses. It's really cute. I know. You look like you have square eyeballs. I guess I could turn off the lights. I got overhead lights on. That's okay. We don't mind. We know what your pretty eyes look like. Okay. Uh, here we go. So when we're talking about any other inversions, this one's three three six. Have we gotten a three three six yet? Yeah. Yes. All right. So here's one. This is on the cheer rules 
org website. So if you need to, you know, brush up on some of these or you want to see some other videos, um, they've switched it to USA Cheer. So you can go to usacheer.org or so cheer.org. And that will, um, that will also, sorry, that will also um, to the site. Just make sure you're using the NFHS rules. Yeah. So Carrie, just real quick about that. Um, that's at the end of our presentation. There was, um, I worked with Jim Lord this weekend on this site. Um, so um, they are um, slowly but surely adding more videos. Awesome. Um, yeah, so hopefully there, there's a limited amount right now, but their goal is to put videos for everything up on there. And oh um, that'd be awesome. Yeah, and it's called, it's, um, I believe it's, it's USHear.com now, not org. Instead of .org? Okay. Yeah. Um, so this video, she does a roll in and then she comes up. But if you notice right before she goes into that inverted position, um, they release her completely. So that means that there is no contact between the top person's upper body and at least one base during an inversion at prep level. So if they were to hold onto her somehow, like grab her waist um, or her shoulder as she's coming up from the roll and keep that contact, then this would be okay. But if you notice right about there, see how everyone, no one's touching her upper body, they kind of just release her. Um, she's still touching her base's shoulders, it looks like, or she's about to be, that doesn't count. They have to be, the bases have to be in contact with her upper body um, the entire time. And she is at prep level because her base of support, the lowest point of connection is the shoulder um, of her base. So this, the way it's performed here, this is illegal. And it's lovely because they put that rolling right here for you. Isn't that great? I love that. Um, let's do, here's another one. I was trying to find some of the versions, but I can't, I guess they took that site down. I don't know, I can't find those. Um, when they switched this over, they must have taken them down. Yeah, he said they had a massive crash. Oh no. So this one is legal because she's at prep level. They can release her to another position. So they can't release and land inverted, but they can start inverted and then roll to any level, right? Yes. Stunt at any level with no twists. So she, they could do this handstand um, here and release to an extension if they wanted to, if they could. Again, God bless and we'll pray for you. Okay. Um, and let's do one more. Um, oops. Let's do this one. This is very similar. Um, again, you can, there's a couple other ones that we're not going to uh, go through, but you can come back to the site at any time. All right. So that one would be legal because they're starting below prep level and they're main um, with that top person. Okay, we're gonna switch back to the um, presentation. I'm getting faster at this, right? This is, <laughs> you should have seen me at all. Um, but again, I just wanna make sure that we're, I'm gonna show you some more videos at the very end to kind of practice this, but spent at any level with no twist. So they can they can start inverted. Remember, this is starting inverted and landing non-inverted. Um, and they cannot release, you can never release and land inverted at all, ever. Don't do it, illegal. Okay. Um, here's some more about 366. And this is about levels. So, um, this one was about releasing. B is about where it starts. So if it begins, it remains below prep level. And then is if it begins at or passes through prep level. Um, so there's different rules depending on where they start. So when you start to see an inversion as a safety judge, you need to, you need to note down or at least think through where did it start, where did it end, and did they release? And then that's gonna help you work through these um, 
the three six rule to make sure that, that it's legal. Basically, um, the three three six rule is pretty much for partner stunts um, because these are unbraced; they're non-braced. So, braced flips has its own rule, right? Um, braced rolls has its own rule. Braced inversions have its own rule, and then three three six is for everything that's just a partner stunt by itself. Um, so again, thinking about where does it start, where does it end, and um, did okay. Sorry, go ahead. a little sidebar. No, I think you kind of covered it there, Carrie. Um, just remember <laughs> um, inversions that begin at that. It's fine. I, I don't care. <laughs> that begins at or passes through that the prep level. Require two people to be in position to protect the head and neck. The exception is our. Pancake style that begins at or below prep level and does not stop extended. Um, flyers, upper body, waist and above um, can be um, hands and arms until no longer inverted or hands on, or feet are on the performing surface. A uh, flyer cannot go directly to an inverted position on the performing surface from, from prep level or higher. Um, uh, the uh, what she's got there is a back bend show and go dismount, and then uh, new catchers um, allowed must be in position prior to the initiation of that skill. And then when the stump begins Great. inverted and transition, what? Go go ahead, Carrie. Oh. I was just going to say the back bend show and go. We see a lot. We saw this a lot last year, and that's when they they think that there's they're staying below prep level, but what they do is they're in a prep or they're in a, a one or two foot stunt and they wanna back walk over out. So they drop down to a squish and then the one base like lifts up and they actually go through the extended pass through prep level above and then the flyer goes to the back end on the ground. So you just have to kind of be sure that they're not um, extending their arms too high. They have to stay at prep level um, or below. I'm sorry, they have to stay below prep level. So they can be in that right. switch position and then they can kind of like fake it show and go. But once they bring it up to prep level or above, they cannot do that back bend straight to the ground. Um, and we again, we saw that a lot. Um, and that would be probably, uh, and I correct me if I'm wrong and Angie you chime in too, but I would think that that would be uh, more of an illegal execution of the stunt um, instead of like an illegal stunt because it is... Um, it is a, a level changing thing. Now, if they do it more than once, then obviously take it as an illegal stunt. But right. anyway. Or if they all go, yeah. if they all go to prep, hold it and then go out, that's, you know, that's where yeah, that's it's true. not, yeah, that's not an execution. That's, you choreographed it that way. Right, right. Everyone was taught this way and that's how they do it. Yep. <laughs> right. And they did it right, but, you yeah. know, you didn't. Right. So, in an illegal um, way. Illegal, right? When the stump begins inverted and transitions to non-inverted, upper body contact may be released before the top person is no longer inverted. Again, that's that um, three-quarter flip up. So um, they can release that um, before the top person is no longer inverted. Yeah. It's kind of like for, to, to be able to catch them safely so you can kind of tell yeah. and you'll be once we, once you see this we don't see a ton of like super super innovative innovative stuff until we get to the um like playoff rounds of our sport and yeah occasionally you'll see something that'll catch your eye yeah. but you'll usually see this you can tell. yeah you'll see this a lot as that three-quarter flip up into a car So the swing down roll stunt is not allowed. They cannot start. Um, they cannot start in a V sit. Basis hold the feet and hands. Flyer forward flips around and back up. The head is heading straight for the ground, and you know they've hit that head sometime during practice. <laughs> exactly right. Um, and there's a really good picture progression in the rule book that shows this exact thing. So if you need a visual, definitely check that out because it shows her and she's smiling and happy in her little V sit. And then her head is like treacherously close to the mat. So cannot do this. 
All right, so the next session section is section four, and this is non-release stunts. So anytime any part of the flyer is connected to anybody standing on the performing surface, any part of the flyer connected to anybody standing on the performance surface, whether it's their base, an extra post, uh, their back spot, it doesn't matter. That is when you're going to look at 3.4. And the good news here is Go none of this has changed from last year. Yay! So if you were doing this last year, um, it's the exact same thing. We do have to, and Carrie reiterates this every single time. <laughs> And it doesn't matter how many times we say it. Three, four, four. They cannot ball release to a, prone, <laughs> to a prone position. Okay, it is. It was illegal last year. It was, a, it was illegal the year before, and it's still illegal now. Are you still there, Carrie? I'm still there. I don't know. I couldn't hear you. Could you guys hear Greg? Again, we're on like a five second delay, so I'm gonna see. I don't know if it's a if yeah. it's an issue with my computer or if it's an issue with your computer. So it's just if anybody in the comments could let us know, could you hear Greg throughout that entire little spiel about ball outs to pro? <laughs> That'd be great. Okay, good. So it's just me. All right, I'm gonna stop talking then. Um, okay. yeah, and Angie, I love your comment. It said it's about the spirit of the rule. If it's truly really a mistake, you can warn them with a thorough comment, and that is so, so uh -huh. important. So if all yeah, the Carrie, do it or it's completely unsafe, you need to take the points. Yeah. Carrie, you are the one who is going in and out, just so that you know. Like you're, do, you're doing okay. it now. <laughs> okay. So um, my computer. Okay. I'm on my school computer, so it should be working fine. <laughs> so <laughs> again, um, well. You're in Montgomery County. You, you, you people are rich. You should, you should be all happy. You would think. <laughs> you would think. Okay. Okay. So, um, in the non-release stunts, nothing has changed. So we, I don't think there's a whole lot that we really need to go over there, Carrie. Do you? Not really. The only thing, um, three, four, two. Um, you can't move over and under another stunt. The only time we really see this is during dances or the cheer section. So it says watch you know, just a reminder to watch the, you can't just tune out when they're not stunting or tumbling. Um, you really have to watch for that choreography as well. So if it's a T-lift over a nugget during their dance or they're, you know, somehow lift, as soon as they lift somebody off the ground, it's considered a stunt. So anytime they do that and they go over someone else on the floor, that's illegal. And then the only other thing, like Greg said, was that um, ball out to prone, still illegal. Cannot do it. <laughs> we see it all the time. Yes. It's crazy. And, and, and Carrie's right. Really pay attention all the way through the entire routine because how many times have we seen, oh my gosh, this is like a 10 routine. And then at the end, they do that stupid little T-lift over a nugget. Now, if their foot touches that yep. nugget, they're fine. But if they go directly Absolutely. over that nugget, it is illegal. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, <laughs> all right. So next rule is releases, 3-5. And this is another one that we cite a lot, this release rule. Um, coaches like to be a little crazy. They don't read all the intricacies about what makes something legal or not. And so sometimes they'll see something either on a YouTube video or another team do it and they don't realize the nuance to make it legal. So um, just to remember, just a reminder of the different types of um, releases when they're talking about these in the the rules. So a quick toss is when the flyer starts with two feet on the ground. The Carrie, you needed to switch grab, the, the cab. Carrie, you need to switch the screen. I did switch the screen. <laughs> no, no, I'm still on non-release stunts. All right, let me see. Pause for technical difficulties. Let's see if we can get this to work. All right. Reset. Give it a couple seconds. There you go, Carrie. Is that good? Okay. Yeah. Um, so quick toss, uh, two feet on grounds. The, the flyer starts with two feet on the ground. 
um, the bases grab the calves and the thighs, and then they toss to a stunt little cradle. So I do have a video example of that, uh, which is right here. I know exactly where that is. This was sent to me a while ago and I just kept it because we don't see these two very often, but when it does come up, um, it is just catches your eye. See very often. Give me one second again. Sorry. I swear there's there has to be a better way to. Here we go. For reals. Here we go. So this is a quick toss. See how she starts with her two feet on the ground and they just throw her right up into that stunt. Um, so that is different than a vertical release and it is also, I mean, it counts as a vertical release, but um, it doesn't have to follow those rules and it is different from a switch up as well. Okay, um, so let's go back here. I just wanna see if it's coming through. All right, so that's a quick toss. Switch up type toss is one foot on the ground, the other is in the base's hands. Um, or position. So it's like a typical, um, uh, help me out, a typical liberty uh, load in where one foot is on the ground, one foot is in the base's hands. The bases apply pressure under that one foot and then they release to a stunt load or cradle. One thing that we see sometimes with the switch up type toss is that they'll put one foot in there and then they'll bounce and then they'll put their other foot in the other hand. So it's almost like a two foot squish load and then they'll try to do a switch up. That is not a switch up. That is a release from a squish and it must follow toss rules. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. How many feet do they have on the floor the entire time before the release? A vertical release is that two feet in the base's hands. It is not a basket grip. It's like a two, um, like a two foot squish. The bases apply pressure under both feet or it could be a and if tossed from below prep level, it must land in a cradle. So if they are tossing from a squish position, they have to follow toss rules. If they're tossed from prep level, they can land at any level. So if they're if they're start at prep level, they can go extend up, they can come down to a squish level, um, but they have to start at prep. And new this year. And a prayer for these little munchkins. Um, they can toss from prep level or above, which means that high to high TikToks are now legal. Um, and they can, or they could do like extension to extension. Um, they could do a high to low um, TikTok. Last year they couldn't do that. You could only go up, you couldn't go back down. Now they can come back down too. So they can talk again, they can they can do a vertical release from prep level or above. God bless. All right. <laughs> so we're going to kind of run through these real quick. Not many things have changed, Greg, I don't think, except for that high to high. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. the catcher's thing. So. Yes. All right. Back on track. Yep. So um, in the release stunts for 3-5, um, in all transitions, the only part that changed um, actually is um, B, uh, it says the top person, uh, I am in section, yep, three, five, okay, I'm just, check, I'm just checking B. It says the top person and at least one brace or maintain hand to hand, I mean, hand to arm contact. So that would be um, three, five, oh, I'm sorry, we're on three, five, two, aren't we? I am way ahead, sorry. Yeah. Okay, so, <laughs> okay. uh, sorry. Uh, so, actually, in uh, three five two and three five three, there are no uh, changes at all. So those are all the same from um, last year. Nothing has changed in those. Um, so you can just kind of read through those because nothing's changed. Carrie, you want to go on to the next? Yep. Is there anything okay. you want to throw um, in? Yeah. The only other thing would be that. Um, Boop, boop, boop. Uh, oh, down there, three, uh, five, four, switch ups are allowed now. Yes, they are. And um, tosses, every once in a while, we'll see have like one extra person, they're like, oh, we'll go double front that toss. They cannot have more than four tossers underneath a basket toss. So just kind of, you know, do a quick sweep with your eye to make sure there's only four and they're not using that like extra Sally Sue, who's usually a nugget in the back to just like front toss because they don't have anywhere else to put her. 
this one, 355, is one of the ones, Carla can attest to this, that we call all the time. Um, and this is another one where I, I put it on separate slides because it's so um, particular to what they have to do and what they can't do. So release transitions have to be um, braced unless they do these following things, which are these things. So this is 355B1. And again, this is one of those where you have to like cite all the numbers. But go ahead, Greg, if you want to go through this one. Okay, so for B1, a non-braced top person in a vertical position at prep level or above may be released to a stunt at any level, provided the top person remains in a position where the upper body remains vertical and the legs are not in a seated or pike position. Vertical releases from an extended position to an extended position may not form more than a quarter twist. Right. And then, so that is your high, high TikToks may not twist more than a quarter. So they can go from like a heel stretch to an arabesque, but they can't do like a 360 high to high. Right. They and could then, do that um, from low to high. From low to high. Yep. Um, and then your um, B2 non brace to uh, top person in a cradle or horizontal position at prep level or below may be released to a loading position or stunt at prep level or below. So that's your 355B2. Again, that's your car. Yep, and we do see this sometimes, 355B2, they'll try to go from like a ball back and at like prep level, like almost like a cradle ball back and release that straight up to extension. Um, and they cannot do that. They can only release to a stunt at prep level or below. So they could do like a show and go where they start at that ball, the ball back in that prep um, position. And then they release to like a squish and go immediately up to the extension, but they can't go from that horizontal position straight up. God bless the high to highs. All right. right. 355 continued, but there's more. <laughs> so uh, the each bracer is at prep level or below. Um, if in a prep or a shoulder stand um, can have two people, bracers do not provide the primary support. Release flyer makes no more than a quarter turn around the bracer and can have um, New catchers, if they are in place, remember they have to be in place at the initiation of the stunt. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about re braced releases, again, these are anything that, that do not flip or roll. So remember if we have a flip, a braced inversion or a braced release, or I'm sorry, a braced flip or a braced roll or a braced inversion that releases, those all follow inversion rules, which is 3.2 what, two, three point three, three point three. If they are just straight up releases, like sometimes I like to call it the, the pig spit, you know, <laughs> they're like, they're holding on to a flyer. They're like the middle flyers in like an arabesque and the little bracer over here has her hands and the little bracer over here has her feet. And then they do like a twist in the middle and they release from their bases. That would be like a release stunt that would have to follow these rules. Um, same thing we'll see a lot, um, which is illegal is if they have their foot like in a hitch and then their bases release them and they go up and hit like a pretty girl while that brace still has their foot and then they land in a cradle. They cannot do that because they have to. And if you look back at the very beginning before all this mess, um, they have to maintain hand to hand arm contact with at least one bracer. So that little, um, you know, step off the foot and landing in the cradle, if they're connected to anybody, they have to be hand arm too. So they could do that if they also have a hand arm, but um, we see that a lot too, where they wanna just have a foot to hand connection and release um, from their bases. So just kind of keep an eye on that. Yeah, um, nothing in the helicopters has changed. No, three, four, the one thing we usually see with helicopters too is that they don't have enough bases. I'm gonna stop moving my mouse around so you can actually see it. They have to have four bases um, to do a legal helicopter. So um, we saw this a couple years ago in the middle of a pyramid where there was a lot of stuff, you know, braced releases and all these kind of cool transitions going off on the side. And then the little middle group did a really quick 
um, helicopter, but they only had three bases. And so the coach, the coach was like, I didn't even think about it. Like helicopters are illegal. Like we just, this is the only people we had left, but um, it was illegal because you have to have four. There's no, it's not like tosses where that fourth one is optional. Yeah. And it has to be face up. Yes. <laughs> also. <important. laughs> um, uh, three five seven uh, get, goes into log rolls. There's no, there's nothing that has been changed there. There's still no toe pitch, toe or leg pitches to jump for tumbling. And three five nine says our quick tosses are allowed. And I believe Greg, remind me because I just put this kind of quickly here, but I think that's all it says. So you can do skills yeah. after a quick toss. You can do twists after a quick toss. There's no other. As long as it's following the rest of three five, you know the rest of the three five rules from the very beginning. Um, they there's no other limitations to those quick tosses. And again, we don't see them that often. And I think it's because you don't get a lot of power just throwing them from their leg or their calf. So it's not quite as dangerous. You don't get the same amount of height as you would if you're coming from you know under the foot. Yeah. So section six is our suspended stunts. Um, three, six, five, the non-brace. I know. Uh, the non-brace splits originate below prep level. So three, six, one, and three, six, two. Um, the only part of three, six, two that changed um, was the added some words um, to the exception where it says top person may re release one hand to grasp the hand of another base post or bracer to adjust his or her um, position. Again, when they come down and they let go just to, to slowly um, or to, to very quickly rearrange their hands for um, safety, we don't care about that. But if they come down and they release and they like, look at me, woo, arms up, high, um, <laughs> high beat, they cannot do that. <laughs> they cannot blow you a kiss. Um, what else have we seen? Salute. So, so they can just rearrange their hands. Pull their ponytail like a stripper pole? I can't do yeah. that either. No. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then, um, and then the, uh, the other part for B, uh, the top person has both hands in contact. Once full, that continuous hand-to-hand -hand, uh, or hand-to-arm contact. Mm -hmm. Yep. Anything else, saw, I, The only reason I kept this in here, we don't see him. Yeah, I was just going to say, we don't, we don't, so suspended stunts we don't see too, too often. However, there was a trend, I don't know if it was last year or two years ago, where in the middle of their stunt sequence, they would drop to like a really low split and then like pop it back up into that single leg. And so really as they're doing that, it's a really quick transition. We just need to make sure that they're, especially if they're coming from, um, prep level or above, which often they are, uh, that they use these three bases. And, and generally, they if they're in a traditional partner stunt, they have three bases. And it's definitely has more control when you do that. But, you know, just kind of keep this in mind or, you know, double check these things and then go to your rule book, make sure that they hit all their requirements um, for that skill if you see it. Um, and then this one is just about um, braced suspended split. So if it's in a pyramid, they kind of have different rules. They don't need as many bases that, as if they're in a partner stunt, but same kind of deal. They just have to maintain contact and slow it down and stuff. So Yeah. Swinging stunts Anything two, three, six, five. We don't see that very often, um, but it's just like if they start if they're starting on the mat and they're grabbing like like one base has a hand and a foot and the other base has a hand and a foot and they just kind of swing them like this to get that momentum back up, um, the top person has to be face up and, and they have to start either on the ground or below prep level. And again, we don't see that that often. Maybe some JV yeah. teams kind of do that sometimes. Almost done, then we're gonna get into some video. So dismounts. Um, under our dismounts, uh, actually all the way through to um, nothing has changed until we 
379. So, Carrie, do you just want to flip over and we'll, I don't want to read yeah. that. I just want to remind, remind everybody that the dismount definition, according to NFHS, and you can cite the glossary um, as a rule if you want to. Um, but the dismount definition is, is that it has to, in order for it to count in this section, it has to be released to the performance surface or released to a cradle. Otherwise, you have to go back to those 3.5 rules about releases um, to, to see it's more of a release transition than if it doesn't release to performance surface or release to cradle. Right. And remember um, when it's, just real quick, Carrie, it released to the performance surface. So if they help them down that's not a release right okay so just be aware of that so um they have to be released all right Kara. sorry yep no you're good so 379 you want to talk about that yeah so for 379 uh cradle dismounts with a bracer um a and b um were the same, the, uh, the, the the change for C, each top person and bracer have a separate fodder with the exception of bracers and double base preps, uh, shoulder sits or thigh stands. So they add it if, they, if it's in a double base prep, they don't need a spotter for the dismount. And then the bracers do not provide primary support to the top person and remain in place during the dismount. So they can't dismount and move. And then the top person makes no more than a quarter turn in a continuous movement. And when the top person is released to new catchers, the catchers are in place uh, when it's initiated and um, they're not involved in any other skill. Do you see a so pattern added, there? So yeah. Um, so they added um, wording to C and then um, they added wording to D and then E and F are both new rules. Um, again, and I really reiterated this throughout all of my coaches' um, meetings. Um, the catchers must be in place prior to the initiation of the release and are not part of any other skill. If they're not in place or they're doing something else when this is initiated, it is illegal. Okay, Carrie. Yep. Yeah, and that's exactly what I was going to say is that anytime. Uh, and they put this in here in every single spot because I think it's new wording. It um, is but new wording. anytime new catchers are in play, you know, if it's a release, if it's an inversion, if it's a dismount, they have to be in place and they cannot be involved in other choreography. Um, so this means too that you cannot, in an inversion, if you're going to new bases, you cannot do like a throw leapfrog where they flip over that post and land um, land on the other side. The tossers and the catchers cannot be the same person. So you can't throw a, a post inversion leapfrog and also be the catcher for that um, because it involves an inversion. Anyway, sorry, I'm going back, but just want to point that out. So again, because you're, you're involved in other things, you're involved in tossing and you're not there to catch them then. Something could happen. Um, and this also goes into play with like, suspended forward roll lines. So if they're standing in like a straight line, there's like three stunt groups in a straight line and the post is in the middle holding their hands and the catchers behind, you know, the tossers behind them toss, so the people in front of them are tossing and they're getting ready to catch that person. They could do it in a ripple, but they can't do it simultaneously because then the catchers are tossing someone else while the other thing is initiating. Does that make any sense? <laughs> Hopefully that makes sense. I'll see if I can find a video of that too later. No uh, chorus line suspended rolls, basically. Right. All right, tumbling. I don't think oh tumbling changed goodness. either. Nothing in nothing in tumbling has changed. The only the and actually the only thing that has changed is the um, dive roll definition, um, right. and so it allows for a little bit of like a, a um, you know airborneness to it, but it has to be like super slight. And I think there is a um, video of that which I can show you at the end. Yeah, the actual definition states 
an airborne forward roll where the feet of the performer are at or above the, the performer's waist prior to the hands making contact with the performing surface. Okay, but just remember in the, the sense of that swan dive is still illegal. Oh, absolutely. All right. Carrie, I thought your children went to bed. They did. They did. No, so <laughs> whenever I can sit on the floor or sit anywhere, something has to be in my lap. So before it was a cat, you couldn't see it. Now my needy dog is like, mommy, pet me. So it's either a kid or an animal. I can't get away. Um, so here's some references, NFHS spirit rules. Um, you can search for the spirit rules if you haven't gotten your book yet or if you need a book. I also got the electronic version, so I always have it with me because I constantly leave my rule book anywhere where I don't need it. Um, and then again, the Sheer Rules site, um, Greg said that he did fix this link so we can send this out to you or we can send the links out to you or put them in the Facebook group for you to access um, right away. And hopefully they will continue to add those resources like Greg said. Yeah. Um, um, just Sandy, a couple little, little Carrie, there's a question. Sandy, you're, you're, yeah, with that little bit of momentum, it, it is now legal. But a, um, if you have to, I mean, just, just a little bit of momentum, and that's fine. Yeah, let me show you a video of that real quick since we're talking about it. We have a question about it. Um, they have it on this um, on this site. So it should for me to find it if my computer works here. If you talk to Jim Lord again, clicking all these clickety clicks is very annoying. I wish the videos were just there and I could just look at them. <laughs> all right, so this is not a dive roll. Do you see how many buttons I have to click just to get to the video? It's annoying. Yeah. <laughs> Well, like I said, it's better than the last one where it just crashed. That is true. That is very true. Five, six, so watch this seven, girl. Eight. One, two, three, four, five. So see how she five, pink six, girl right seven, here. Eight. One, two, three, four, five. That is not a dive roll. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five. So she does leave the I'm gonna to try to pause it. Five, six, seven, eight, one. So her hands and feet are off the performing surface slightly, but again, like Greg said, when he read that definition, her ankles and her feet are not even with and or above her waist. Um, so this is allowed now, it's just a slight little hop. Um, it's not It's not part of the definition of dive roll any longer. So Sandy, does that help the visual? <laughs> Aaron says, not a dive roll and not cute. <laughs> you don't like the little kick? Come on, don't you kick behind? <laughs> so again, legal for high school and below. All right, a little bit of extra, bless their hearts. All right, um, so while judging, and again, some of these come from Angie, feel free to jump in on the comments too, if you have any more suggestions. Um, but like she said earlier, we as safety judges have to look at safety infractions and falls and bobbles. So. Um, I didn't have the safety deduction sheet up, but you'll see that on there, there are infractions for, uh, you know, if they fall out of a stun, if they fall to a cradle, all that kind of stuff. Um, so we're looking for that as well as these safety infractions. Um, one person should try to stay at the front of the mat, whether they're um, sitting at the table um, or if they're just standing kind of in the front. And then one person should be to the side or the back of the mat. Um, try well, not to I wear put skinny heels. Oh, go ahead. So I put where they may sit at the table. Because sometimes mm -hmm. the table is the best place for them to be able to see. So if if the table is the safest place for you to be judging and for you to be able to see, sit at the table. I mean, that's how we do it at All Star. So right. Well, wow. I'm thinking because now what we're seeing is we're in gyms and there's a lot of people that walk past who don't adhere oh, yeah. to don't walk when the when the it's like a common practice at wherever you are instead of fighting with them to try and get them to stay out of your way just go sit at the table you can see what you need to say 
Yeah, that's true. Um, in case you have to walk on the mat for any reason, um, try not to wear like super skinny, like spike heels because you could puncture the mat or at least one of the safety judges. And trust me, ladies, that hurts my heart too because you know I love a good skinny heel. Um, you can stop the routine for safety reasons. So if there's one time we saw um, a girl's uh, um, ace bandage wrap became unwrapped and was like hanging down and it was causing issues. So you have to stop the routine for that. If it's going to become a safety issue, it needs to stop. If someone's throwing up bodily fluids, that would be another reason. Um, and again, you can, you can stop it. The head judge can stop it and the competition director can stop yeah. it. And um, can I just real quick, Carrie, instead of saying can stop, you are expected to stop the routines for safety reasons. If you can't mm -hmm. get anybody to stop, walk out on the mat and stop it. Yep. Okay. But that's the only part. <laughs> yes, because sometimes you'll, you'll get a coach who, who, who will be like, no, they're fine, they're fine. Coaches don't get to make that decision. Nope. <laughs> yes, tampon on the mat, bone breaking situation, almost amputated arm. Those would be good reasons to stop. <laughs> um, <laughs> try not to walk on the mat during routine unless you're stopping it. Sometime, like for what was, I forget when it was, but someone was like, "Oh, I need to see that pyramid grip," and so they walked onto the mat. You don't don't do that. You don't know what they're going to do next, um, and so you could get in the way or you could call injury. Um, if you are stopping it, obviously, and they're not listening to you and they're not paying attention, then you can walk on the mat. Sometimes we'll see too, and again, we don't stop routines super often. It's maybe once or twice a season, knock on wood. I hope I'm not jinxing us. Um, sometimes even if the DJ stops the music, the kids will start counting because they don't realize that it was stopped for a safety reason. And then you really have to make sure that they are stopping and, and safely. So if they're in a stunt, you know, just say, hey, come down safely, you know, it's okay. And then talk to the coach and let them know um, why you stopped it, obviously, if it's not obvious. Um, keep an eye on the mat for bobby pins, um, separated mats, bodily fluids, all that kind of stuff. Sometimes some one person will notice it and someone else won't. If the panel notices it, obviously, if they're like, that girl just threw up, don't argue with them, <laughs> just take their word for it. Um, when we're using our tracking sheets, we only track the warnings and deductions for safety infractions. Uh, I don't care which team had a fall or a drop or a bobble, it doesn't matter. What I want to know is if you gave a team a warning at X Invitational and they still perform it incorrectly the next time, then they're getting the full deduction because they didn't fix it. Um, so we only really need the warnings and deductions. And it also helps, you know, Greg and Angie and I figure out if there's one rule that is being constantly broken that we maybe need to do some more education to our coaches about that. Um, please post a picture of the tracking sheet when the competition is over to that Facebook messenger group. If you're not in that group yet and you are scheduled to be a safety judge this season, please let Andrea or I know so we can add you. Um, and look for jewelry and nails during the dance and cheer and dump, uh, cheer and jumps. Um, because, you know, and, and of course, any safety infractions, but um, but that's a good time to kind of check on on jewelry and stuff. And sometimes we'll see their little ankles like sticking out of their sock. If you're not sure, it's OK. Give it to the team. Um, we're not going to be like the jewelry and nail police. It's obvious then um, then you need to take it because they know better at this point. Um, Greg, what right. and how we're do you not, feel about right. And we honored. I'm, I'm sorry, Kara. And under no circumstances are we to ask as an athlete to show their nipple, to pull up their 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 um um, um top, their, their uniform top, um, just right down on there. You know, um, I suspect there might be jewelry. Make sure everything's out for safety purposes. Um, but under no circumstances are we to ask to see any nipples or belly button rings or anything like that, please. Harry? <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, I didn't do that. All right. <laughs> um, bring a clipboard or a notebook with you some they don't often i mean especially at invitationals it's like hit or miss whether you have supplies or not so if you're going to be walking around especially you need something hard to write on so you can make notes while the while the routine is going on and again just like we do with panel judging try to be as specific as possible 
with where in the routine things happen. So what I like to do a lot is draw little X's of the, especially during like the stunt sequence or the pyramid formation. So if they have like five across, I'll draw five X's and I'll circle the one that fell. And so you can say first stunt sequence, this group was the fall. And it's really hard for coaches to argue that after the, not that they can argue, but they sometimes they come back with like, that wasn't a fall. We need to be more consistent, blah, blah. No, that was a fall. Like go back, here's exactly where it was. Go check your video. And then they can't really argue it. Cause oftentimes they're not, they're sitting so close. They can't always see everything that's happening. And so they do miss some things live. So again, the mo right. more specific you can be, the better. Right. Um, and they'll say, well, can I bring the video to you? The answer to that is no. No. Because we've given we it. It's done. Yeah. Sorry and then, um, Aaron, your question is you will deduct it one time. You will not deduct it per person. You would just deduct it one time. And then um, I, re <laughs> I, I, yeah, I um, reiterated to the coaches about homecoming and nails, that that's their favorite time to go get their nails done. And it always falls mm -hmm. during our competition. So they need to be careful. They can have color, they just can't right. have the length. Right. It doesn't matter, as long as it's not too super long that it's gonna scratch a sister. Right, um, or a brother. One more thing about this, or a brother, yeah. <laughs> Keep an eye on the mat for body pins and separated mats. That doesn't mean that you have to go out there and fix it. There are tons of cheerleaders out there that can go help you push mats together. Or you can say, hey, Ligonor JV, come out here and push these mats together. They're kids. They can do it. No problem. Bobby pin, same thing. Um, we're not super concerned with that. If you have an extra moment and you can go and clean them up or there's a little runner and you can be like, hey, can you go check for bobby pins? Don't feel like you have to crawl around on that dirty, dirty mat in your nice clothes. <laughs> I do it, but that doesn't mean everybody else has to do it. All right. All right. You know, Angie, anything to add on this? Uh... Yes, this happened. Yeah. All right. If you have anything, we can always go back. Um, on the safety deduction sheet, um, just a little reminder, and this should have been in the information packet that Angie sent you earlier. Um, there is an improper, the only thing that changed on this sheet from last up, the improper dismount technique, which was 0.25 to a 0.5 deduction. Um, this, unfortunately, it was my fault. Um, this wasn't changed soon enough for all of the, uh, be before teams started making copies of it. So just make sure if you're taking this dismount that you check the sheet that you were given at that event to make sure that it is a 0.5. All this information went out to coaches um, so they know that it's supposed to be a 0.5. Um, and again, we don't necessarily, this isn't, well, never mind. Just make sure it's a 0.5. Um, and we upped it to also include um, landing inverted. So especially during like pancake, you know, coming down, I know it says improper dismount, maybe we need to switch that. But um, if they're doing like a, a, um, like a, a vert, horse, sorry, it's getting late, <laughs> a vertical to horizontal transition, and they land inverted. Um, and it's just a slight inversion, um, you could call it, you could call this one instead, or if it's a like a pancake that lands inverted, um, now, if their head's on the ground, then that's an illegal execution. But um, this is these are for like slight things where you don't think they need the full three points off, but they still need to be deducted for it. Um, incomplete twists absolutely still count here. And we're looking at the hips of the flyer to see if it's complete or incomplete. Um, and that's a twisting dismount. So like a twist to cradle. Um, if anything is like super uncontrolled and that's a little bit vague, it's a little bit subjective. So you need to have a conversation both with the other safety judge and with the head judge um, before you take that. If anything, you could at least warn it. Um, and then a slight touchdown of a body part. So before we had um, a fall to floor and that was any part of the flyer touching down but if they're just coming down into the cradle and they kind of dip a little bit and maybe the finger slices um the ground or like a ankle or a um sorry a, a heel you know kind of grazes the ground um you can take improper dismount instead um sometimes they'll come down in the cradle and the flyer won't hold that that um v position and they'll let their feet fall down now if it's like heels slamming on the mat then you need to take 
um, the fall to ground because that is un that is completely uncontrolled and that could cause a knee injury. But again, this is a slight touchdown, no weight borne. It just gives us a little bit more um, leeway with that. So it's not, we're not, you know, giving them two points off for like a finger touching the ground. Yeah, Carrie, we could do the improper um, dismount as improper dismount slash catching technique. Yeah, something, I think just because dismount di by definition means release, but whatever, it's fine this season. I think I wrote all this stuff on the new one anyway, so it's fine. Um, bobbles, we still have. Um, just be consistent within that competition. Um, balance checks don't count. So if they kind of go up and they like lean, their upper body kind of leans a little bit to the side or they kind of do a little bend and then come right back up, that's okay. We don't count that as a bobble. This could be though, it's more of like they're, they're bobbling, they're like doing everything they can to like save the stunt and the stunt never actually falls. That's what a bobble is. So it could be a base or a flyer moving to quote unquote save a stunt. If the flyer loses their body position and either can't get it back or they're like, try to hit that scale and bring it down, try to hit it again, bring it down, try to get it, bring it hit again and bring it down. That would be one bobble, right? And the other thing with this is, is if they're bobbling all over the place and then they end up falling, we're just taking the fall. We're not giving them a bobble and a fall. <laughs> so you just take the higher deduction. Um, and again, this is why there's two safety people so you can kind of talk about it and decide what is your threshold for bobbles going to be and make sure that it's consistent across the entire competition. We don't want to be too, too uh, picky about this, even though it's only 0.25. Um, improper execution could be a performance error, a wrong grip. If you can tell that it's just one group instead of all the groups, um, if it's a slight miscalculation as opposed to like a completely it was choreographed wrong. Um, sometimes if they, you know, miss their grip or something like that and they still complete it. An illegal stunt is when you can tell that it is choreographed illegally. Um, and again, after you do this a couple of times, you will 100% be able to tell the difference between improper execution and a legal stunt. Um, if you have a conversation about any skill in the routine, you have to at least warn it, or at the very least, write a comment to educate the coach. So if you're unsure, and you guys are kind of going back to like, I'm not sure it's kind of a gray area, or I'm not sure if they started at prep or whatever, um, just make a comment and, and let the coach know so that way you know we're all human it happens in an instant we only get one shot at it and you will miss stuff it's okay it's i mean it's not great but it's it's gonna happen um but if you at least uh, uh have it um, i'm sorry if at least comment and educate the coach then they'll know for next time and they can always send that um question to greg or angie or i as well um and that's another good thing that you can write on there like please send this please send a video of this skill in for a double check um, that doesn't mean that you're going to take it at that competition, though. Exceeding boundaries. This is only to be taken during skills that are being completed. So they can transition off the mat. They can start their tumbling run off the mat. We saw kids that start the entire routine off the mat. If they're not doing anything but walking or transitioning or running, they can do that off the mat. It doesn't matter about is if a tumbling lands off a mat or it's so uncontrolled that they you know land and then take a couple steps and they haven't controlled that landing um or if they like stunt off the mat if they're trying to save the thing and they go completely off the mat they cannot jump off a mat um and they really shouldn't be dancing off the mat but that's kind of that would be more of a warning for me you guys can decide whether i'm being too lenient or not but it's it's mainly about the safety of the kids um, so any skills have to be within the boundaries of those seven mats. Um, and then definitely at least warn for inappropriate cheer and dance motion and, war and words. Um, because it is subjective, and we talk about this a lot in other arenas of the sport as well, um, it is very subjective. However, there are certain things that are definitely inappropriate. So you can take, um, you know, inappropriate deduction if, you know, you both agree that head judge agrees, the panel agrees, you know, like you need more than one person being like, no, that's inappropriate. Um, but you definitely need to warrant. We're trying to change the image of the sport. So again, if they're doing things like that whole stripper pole or they're rubbing on their legs or twerking, especially if they're twerking in a stunt, that's unnecessarily. If they're, I swear to God, we saw a team that like in their dance crawled on all fours towards the front of the mat probably not appropriate. So you can definitely uh, have a conversation about that and warn that if nothing else. 
thoughts on that, Greg? I'm good. Keep going. Okay. Um, go ahead. Okay, so I added this just so that you guys are aware. Um, when um, it comes time for social media, please do not post, uh, do not make any uh, references or posts um, related to any of our competitions, teams, or personnel uh, with, uh, within our organization as related to our organization. Okay, um, you know, you, you, I can put on there, God, Aaron looked like an ass this morning. That's fine, but I can't say at the competition, God, Aaron was judging and she looked like an ass. Okay, <laughs> sorry, Aaron. But so, you know, um, I mean, there's social media should not come into play when it comes to our competition. Um, I even had, and I, and I know this sounds crazy, but you know, don't even, um, you, you know, say good luck to the teams because I got a few issues like, well, you know, they're, you know, they say good luck at Baltimore County, but they didn't say good, good, good luck at Howard County. So just, you know, just, just leave us off of face, I mean, off of your post, please. Um, and then again, nobody on here, unless you have been specifically asked by, um, Carrie or Michelle or Angie or myself, should you be making any legality decisions for teams? If they send something to you, do not answer them. Or say, you may send this in, but I cannot answer you. Um, for your phone use, um, the phone is now has become a, refer a resource for you. You can use it, but make sure hey, I'm checking something on the chair safe. Um, and then, or I'm referring back to my rules are on there. Um, I'm okay with that, Carrie. Um, are you, I mean, I, I don't mean, have a problem with it. on my phone. <laughs> oh my God, right, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, um, of course, don't have your phone out videotaping. Right, no. Okay, <laughs> right. And, oh, yeah. Do not videotape any part of our competitions from the judges' stand. Okay. All right, Carrie. Anything else? Um, yeah, Jessica had a question about um, bows, like uh, wiglets falling out on the mats. Um, it is a deduction if you if the team steps on them, stunts on them, tumbles on them. So yeah, what we suggest to coaches and what we we tell them to coach their kids to do is to just pick it up and throw it off the mat. Or sometimes we'll even see them pick it up and stuff it down their shirt, which whatever. Um, what they can't do with with um, bows is put it on their wrist because once they put it on their wrist, then that becomes jewelry, and then that is also illegal. So um, yeah, so as long as you just toss it off the mat. Um, that's fine. Or if they, or if nobody steps on it, I mean, that's fine too. If they just kind of, um, uh, you know, walk around it or whatever. Um, Angie, go back to dismounts. Really bad pancake done legally, but is unsafe. Can we take it as a dismount deduction? Yes. So if it's a, um, if it's like a, you know, kind of inverted, they land sort of, they don't, the base is maybe catch the butt a little higher or they're kind of like falling through. Um, you you can make, it can be like, yeah, I would say yes, take it as the dismount deduction instead of illegal um, execution. Because it's basically just that last part that's the issue. Um, if they're stalling at the top, obviously you need to take the whole thing. All right, I do, I think that was our last slide. So I do want to go back to, um, uh, the videos real quick because I did save some and I switched out of this. I'm so sorry uh, for us to kind of practice with just briefly. So give me one second to switch to my other channel. I have a school channel and then a judge channel. It's, it's a lot. Okay. Sorry. Where are my videos? Here we go. You get to hear me sing. Yay. All right, um, so this is an example of a high to high TikTok, just so we're all on the same page. Hopefully it'll not be all screwy like it was the last time. 
it's from the side, but it's the best one I could find that just kind of shows what what is legal at this point. So they're in an extended lib, and then they switch and they land in an extended lib, and everybody lets go. Hi to hi TikTok legal this year. They can do that um, it, with body positions as well, and again, they can do that with a um, quarter twist only. So with that in mind, is this next sequence legal? What do we think? I'll play it one more time. Watch specifically that release at the beginning. Again, we're in a little bit of delay, so I'm gonna give you a, a moment to kind of think about it and decide legal, illegal. All right, I think our delay is a little longer than, than I thought. Um, so let's talk through it real quick. We know high to highs can only do a quarter twist, but where does she actually start the release? So they go up, they hit that extension, and then they bring her down to prep level. So she is not releasing until prep level. So this is technically a low to high TikTok. So she's low, low they 360, around, I think it's supposed to be low to high. It's more like low to like, eh, almost high. <laughs> um, but if they're executing it correctly, it should have been low to high. And this is legal because you can do up to one and a quarter twists low to high, right? just as a uh, toss after this. So one more time, just be careful because we will see stuff like this. I'm gonna try to make it bigger. Up, down, up. Okay, so this is kind of what I say in my head too. And I think I actually got that wording from Kristen Goldstraw perhaps. But I always say like, okay, are they extended, not extended? Where are they starting? Where are they ending? So one last time. So up. Down, up. So they're okay doing that 360 there. Does everyone see that? Be careful because they are um, a little tricky sometimes with that. Feel free if I ask you if it's legal or illegal to drop it in the comments. Is everyone scared to say <laughs> whether they think it's legal or illegal? Um, so I brought up this, and I was actually surprised when I looked at this video. It's the top 10 stunt sequence at worlds 2019 um somebody just put it together as a compilation um i was really surprised to see how many of these stunt sequences were pretty much legal for our kids it was really scary so um we're gonna go through just a couple of leads um that i have already picked out to show you um hold on let me find it if you have, this is illegal ball ball release the frog Oh, you can't do it. Right here? Nope. They don't even ball. Very much illegal. Cannot do it. They must hold on. <laughs> All right. Um, the first one I want to show you is here around 1.30. Come on. Watch the girl in the middle. Right here. Just the girl in the middle. Ready? Right there. Legal or illegal? Girl in the middle.
Everyone's afraid to answer. This is illegal. So she is doing a high to high 360 release. She, you cannot do that in high school because it's a high to high 360, right? So watch where she starts and ends. Just this middle girl. Don't worry about this part. That's fine. They can do that. Here to here, 360 high to high release. Illegal. All right, moving on. Is it better if I just kind of go through these quickly and let you know whether it's legal or illegal? No one's answering me. Okay. Well, Carrie, the video is um, kind of hard to Carrie, the video is kind of hard to see. It it like starts, but we don't get to see it all the way through because it's oh, kind of it jumpy? jumpy. Yeah. Oh, boo. All right, I'll do a second. Like I said with the other ones, I'll do a, it. It's playing fine on my screen, people. Um, I'll do a second video of just the streaming on at school where it's better. Um, quality, but just for the sake of this, just in case maybe the recorded version is better. Um, the middle girl right here, don't watch the outside people, just watch this one. Maybe if I take it off of, I'll take it off of extended screen and see if that helps. Let's try this instead. So watch just this middle girl. What do we think about that release? Again, you're thinking about where does she start? Where does she end? Now I see how that was kind of jumpy. Well, oh, that's poopy. No, I missed it completely. Gosh darn it, this was such a good idea until these stupid videos. I don't think it likes to be like YouTube for me to be on YouTube and playing YouTube videos at the same time. We'll try it one more time. All right, so middle girl right here. Um, what she's doing is a uh, release, but she's starting in a squish, and then she's releasing back to a squish in like a V-sit position. Um, so the way that it's performed here is illegal because they start in a two-foot squish. So if they're starting in the squish, um, they have to land in a cradle, remember. So this would be legal because she's in a star position. She's not in a seated or a pike position. This could be legal if they started at a prep level. So if they start a prep level and they release, they can cat do that like kind of like between the legs split catch as long as they stay in a star. They cannot catch in a V-sit, however. Um, and they cannot do like a V-sit. One time we saw a V-sit, almost like a V-sit helicopter, where they wanted to be in a V-sit at prep level and then release and do a full twist and re-land in that V-sit. Um, they cannot do that because they're in a seated uh, and or pipe position. All right, so are none of these videos working? I don't even think it's like worth it if it's, if they're being all jumpy. I don't wanna waste your time. They're, they're just really jumpy really jumpy. Okay, I'll tell you what. I will put um, this this video is in the um, the training group, like where you found this video and where you can find the repeat of the of the videos. So in the comments, I will put the time of the skills and explain what it is and whether it's legal or not. So at least you have an example of that and you can go through and watch it on your own and just fast forward um, to those parts. But this is actually um, a really good video, number one, to watch really good cheerleading, and number two, um, to test yourself to see what is legal and what isn't. Now, of course, in level five and level six, um, I think these are all level five, but in level five, um, <clears throat> all star, they can do double twists, which we are not allowed to do at all. So anytime they double twist, obviously that's illegal. We haven't had a lot of issues with double twisting because it hasn't been a rule for us for a while. Um, and so coaches are out of the habit of having their kids do that. They don't even really attempt it anymore. Still watch for it, but we don't see it. But anyway, regardless of the double twisting, they do do a lot of releases. They do a lot of inversions. Um, so it is a great video to use to practice, um, you know, looking for where things start, where things end. Are they inverted? Do they actually release? Who is holding on? How many people are holding on um, to try to to see what could be legal or illegal if we see it on the, um, the mat for us. All right, so again, I will put this video is already in that list of videos in where you know these replay, um, and then I'll put the, the timing of the skills that I was going to point out in the comments of that.
and that might be easier. And then of course you can always use uh, this cheer, usacheer.org. Just make sure you're over here on this NFHS rules videos side, uh, not this side, okay? So the NFHS rules side, uh, very important. <laughs> you're looking at the right, the right stunts. Anything else, Greg? Um, I can't think of anything else, Carrie. That USA cheer, just, you know, um, every once in a while, um, just go back and um, look at it because he's going to be updating it. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, you guys for tuning in. Um, I feel like this is a good venue. I love that Greg and I could do this together. That was so wonderful uh, and and remotely, but we'll have to figure out a better way to do the videos um, because I think that's important for us. It's hard to explain these things without those video references. So I'll keep trying. Maybe we can convince the um, committee to give us a um, like a webinar to pay for like a webinar link. What do you think? When <laughs> we have some money, um, that could be like more legit than just, you know, this whatever Jerry rigged out of like a free YouTube download thing. So <laughs> I'll keep trying. I'll ask next next time we have our meeting. But all right. Well, I'm gonna sign off. Greg, you wanna say bye? Yeah. Thanks everybody for coming on. And Angie, you're right. Before each competition that you judge, watch the videos. You'll probably see them pop up. Um, and you might even see them out on the floor. So thank you, Angie. But yeah, everything else was good. Thanks, Carrie. Carrie, uh, for doing this. Of course. Yeah. And I'll um I'll get that I'll uh anyway, I'll I'll work it out. It'll be great. All right. Interims are due this week for us too. So I'm a little like all over the place, but I promise it's coming, I swear. All right. Thanks, guys. And again, if you have any questions after this, feel free to email Greg or myself or Angie. Um, you can also drop them in the comments under this video. I'll go back and monitor that as well. Um, and it was so great of you guys to chime in. Thanks for sticking with us. Bye. Thanks, everybody. All right. Now I got to figure out how to end it. Here we go. Bye. I guess I just leave studio. See you, Carrie. <laughs> yeah. Bye.